one. Greetings, brothers and sisters. It's your brother, son, in Esperance. Ah, some of you may know me as the podcast man. Back again with another testimony on how God brought this brother out of the world and into his church. I'm not going to hold you too long. As always, I got to make these very simple announcements. We could have new ones listening. And if you are new and listening, thank you for coming and tuning into the I Thrive Podcast. This podcast affiliates itself with one church and one church only. That is First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ with a leader, teacher, and guide is Apostle Pastor Gino Jennings. If you want to be baptized right in the name of Jesus Christ, you can go to truthofgod.com, click locations, and see what location is closest to you and set that baptism up. You can contact the local minister or the secretary of that surrounding area to set your baptism up. If you're looking for a first church to attend, you want to see if there's one that's nearby, you can go on the truthofgod.com, click locations, and see what locations to you. Same process and procedures. Uh, um, if you want to call to see if service is going on and all that type of stuff, go ahead. But uh, that should be able to help you right then and there. As always, we want to keep the apostle and his family in prayer, as well as the faithful ministering brothers and their families as well. And let's not forget to keep one another in prayer too, brothers and sisters. As I say more over, you never know what one is going through. You never know when it's fighting. My God, let's keep one another in prayer. Uh, as always, stay tuned for updates. You can follow us on Facebook, I Thrive Podcast. You could also follow us on Instagram at I Thrive Podcast as well. That you know you get updates and left and right type of stuff from there. You could also check the website at www.ithrivedpodcast.com. All right, so uh, I'm gonna get out the way, brothers and sisters. And uh, well, as always, don't forget to. Pray for your brother and his family. Don't, don't forget now. Nah. Don't forget to pray for your brother and his family. All right. As always, we're going to uh, uh, bring our brother in. I believe it's a brother from Georgia, if I'm correct. But he he, he going to let us know. It's uh, our brother, Zyquez Dukes. Am I correct, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brother Zyquez Greetings. And from out of Georgia? Georgia? Yes, sir. Georgia. Georgia, where in Georgia? Savannah, Georgia. Savannah, Georgia. Savannah. You know, it's it's you know, I gotta give God thanks because you know, before coming to first church, all I knew was Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? All I knew, <laughs> all I knew was Atlanta. You heard it? All I knew was Atlanta. I didn't even know about no Georgia. All I knew was Atlanta. Yes, Georgia. I feel like, yeah, Atlanta, I feel like Atlanta was their own country or something like that, man. That's that's all that's all I, <laughs> that's all I knew. But coming to truth, it's I'm hearing there's Augusta and Savannah and this uh, and that's uh it's just a uh, a blessing and so forth. But thank you very much, brother, for having uh for coming on. How are you doing this evening? Man, I'm doing great. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I could already hear people or uh, see comments probably being said. Are you two blood related? Are you? Hi. <laughs> already seen it already. By God, you know, yes, you get sir. two brothers and glasses and, you know, a beard. Come on, <laughs> got the beard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, spirit is thicker than blood, I must say. Spirit Come is on. thicker than blood, you know, so, but. Uh, Come we, on, we, that's we, it. We, we yes, brothers, but godless, you feel me? You feel me? But uh, I, I could expect. That's it, that's it. That's it. Along, but, you know, brother, I'm going to get out the way. You know, it's time. People want to hear, watch, and listen to your testimony on how God brought you out of the world. And into his church. So tell me, brother, how did God tell us? How did God bring you out of the world and into his church? Well, I just want to start with saying, um, back in falsehood, uh, my family, they were always uh very dedicated and committed to what they knew. Um, it seemed like we were in church like every night. <laughs> we were in church yeah, every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Friday. Uh, even after the service on Sunday, sometimes we'd go to two other church services. We were just always, always in church. Um, wasn't necessarily because of my parents, uh, but my grandparents, uh, both of them being filled with the Holy Ghost and um, taking part and helping my parents out, with raising me. Um, so I, I definitely do thank God for them. And I will say uh, we started out in what seemed to be a Trinitarian Pentecostal church. And I say seemed to be because uh, they never claim that title Trinitarian. They never profess to say we're Trinitarian, but their ways display that because of, you know, them baptized and they said, I baptize the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Uh, when they would pray, they would recognize all three in the prayer and say, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. So I would say that it was uh, a Pentecostal type church, but uh, they had Trinitarian kind of ways. 
Um, but one thing I will say that they emphasize on at that church, um, they emphasize on that you have to have the Holy Ghost. That was that was one thing that they pounded on tremendously. I mean, as much as uh, our overseer today pounds on it, that's how they they pounded on that so hard. Um, and the church that I came out of, it was full of women preachers. I had cousins that were women preachers, aunts, uh, family members, friends, so many different ones that were just rooted in that. And that's actually how our family got the first introduction into, I guess you would say, a form of holiness or a form of, you know, that. And so um, while being there, they would always emphasize and say that you had to tear for the Holy Ghost. You had to be saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. And I always knew that I didn't want to go to hell because they would always tell me that if you didn't have the Holy Ghost, you're going to be lost. You're going to hurt. You got to make sure you repent of your sins and cry out to God. So with that little bit of knowledge that I did have, they always kept the young people on the altar. So it was like the front of the church uh, where the pulpit was at, there was like um, an area where you could come and kneel down and they had like uh, pillows and cushion type stuff going all around it. And so we would come out to the church about three times a month and they would consider that, I guess you would say tarry service is what some people would call it or waiting service, seeking service. And, um, We'd come there for three days and we'd uh, lay out on the altar and just cry out to God and call on his name. We'd come and do that for a few hours and then we'd go back home and then, you know, go to school, go to work the next day, come back, lay on the altar, cry out to God. And so in the midst of doing that, um, I was seeking for the Holy Ghost and I was wanting to be filled. And I would get uh, discouraged sometimes because I would have it in my mind. I'm going to receive it tonight. I'm going to receive it tonight. And I would get there and it's like I would cry out to God, call on his name. And it's, it felt like nothing happened. And I'm like, okay, what am I doing wrong? So that, that happened for a little while, probably about, I'd say about a year or two that happened for a little while. Uh, but it was one night uh, we were in service. Uh, it was on a Thursday night. Um, well, let me go back before that happened. My cousin called me one night and he was talking with me on the phone. He was uh, taking a trip up to Virginia for work. And he was just encouraging me saying, Quiz, you got to seek for the Holy Ghost, man. You, you know, you know, Times, you know, winding up, you need to get yourself together, you know, seek for the Holy Ghost. And at this time, I was 16 when he told me this. And I always felt left out not having the Holy Ghost. Like most of my family members, they had the Holy Ghost. And I felt left out. And I was like, you know, I, I definitely want to be able to experience what this joy that they keep talking about. I don't want to just come to church and play the piano and see the joy falling on them or come to church. I'm playing the drums, see the joy falling. On them. I want to be able to experience that joy in the presence of God being on the inside of me. Um, Because I'm hearing you talk about it so much. So I I want to be able to uh, bear witness with that. So uh, after that conversation that night, it it really uh, put, I guess you would say, it really put it in drive mode for me to really start pulling on heaven even more. Um, And I remember after that, there was a revival service going on at the church. And um, during this revival service, uh, it was centered around, you know, those that want to be filled with the Holy Ghost coming and crying out, believing God to fill you. And I remember that Thursday night, um, I was on the piano playing and they were getting ready to close out. And all of a sudden I just was listening to the song they were singing and my body started quickening and I started feeling the presence of the Lord dealing with me. And I started crying and my body started quickening and the Lord was dealing with me that night. And I remember they were getting ready to leave and we were just prayed out. And one of the church mothers uh, said to me, she said, brother, she said, if you come back tomorrow night, she said, God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And the mother was encouraging me saying that. And I really, you know, believed it. Like I said, my body was just quickening that night. Never spoken tongues. Felt the presence of the Lord move on me for the first time, just, you know, in quickening um, that night. But I heard what she said about how God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost, the church mother encouraging me. So I took that advice, you know, what she said, that word that she said. And I came back home that night. And my great grandmother told me while I was staying with her that uh, evening, she said, Quez, if you really want to receive the Holy Ghost, She said, I'm telling you, when you go to school tomorrow, she said, turn down your plate. Don't talk to anybody. She said, set your mind on heaven and God's going to give you the Holy Ghost. And I was like, Grandma, does it really take all of that? Does does it really take that I have to not talk to nobody, turn down my plate, don't eat any food? Like, does it really take all of that? She said, I'm telling you, Quez, if you trust what I'm telling you, I promise you it'll work. So the next morning when I got up um, and I went to school, Brother, it was like I was a ghost. Nobody even spoke to me at school that day. As much as I'm in the cafeteria, cut, you know, when you're in the cafeteria, you're cutting up with your friends and your family members and all, you know, different uh, classmates and stuff like that. It's like I was a ghost at the lunch table. And I was like one of the class clowns. I was always cutting up doing stuff. But that particular day, 
I remember being in the hallway and I remember uh, wanting to speak to people and it's like they didn't even notice me. I even remember that, that day the teachers didn't even really recognize me that day. It was just like everything was centered around nobody engaging with me so my mind could stay focused for what was to come later on that day. So I left from the lunch table. I remember going to the library and I was sitting in there just meditating, thinking about service that night. And I remember that um, after that, uh, went on home, got home later on that night, we went to service. And that night while we were in praise and testimony service, I got down on my knees and I started crying out for God. And I said, Lord, tomorrow is my birthday. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost on my birthday. I want to make sure that if there's any gift I receive, that is the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's really what I want. And I was crying out to God and I was truly believing that that was the best gift I could receive for my birthday. I was truly believing that God could fill me with the Holy Ghost. And so while they were in praise and worship, I was on my knees calling on his name, saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And in the midst of that, I started speaking in tongues, brother. Wow. Holy Ghost came over me. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Holy Ghost came over me that night. And just like my grandmother had told me about going to school that day, setting my mind on heaven and, and not speaking to anyone and fasting and praying, God came and filled me that night. And that was on a December 15th, 2017. Wow. And December 16th, 2017, I turned 17. Mm. And so this year, that will make going in almost seven years now. And I thank God for that because uh, I won't leave out this part that that was that Friday night, uh, December 15th, when I got filled with the Holy Ghost. December 16th, that Saturday was my birthday. And then here comes that Tuesday, which would have been like the 20th, I think, or the 21st. Um, that Tuesday, uh, something happened that day of uh, for me that was very different and it caught me off guard. And I will say that the false church that I came out of, they did a really great job on telling us that we had to receive the Holy Ghost. Like most churches today, they're telling you, you got to receive the Holy Ghost. But the thing that that particular church did not emphasize on, they didn't tell us how to live with it and how to keep it. Mm. So they were emphasizing on how to get it, but they didn't tell us how to keep it because brother, I'm going to tell you when Tuesday came, I had it in my mind that Friday, that Saturday, that Sunday, that Monday, I was on this this joy. I mean, I just couldn't be still. I was just, man, I'm telling you, I was on fire. I mean, the Lord was just dealing with me that even the next day, the Holy Ghost was moving on me. I mean, back at church on that Sunday, Monday at school, man, it was just so much going on. I even remember uh, at that time, it was a young lady I was interested in, too. Um, I told her, I said, sister, I said, we can't even, you know, talk anymore because I knew that the sister didn't have the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that anyone told me that, but I, I felt like, you know, sister, if you're not on the same frequency or not, you know, seeking the Lord at this same level, I don't need any distractions, you know, because I felt the Lord really dealing with me in a different way. And I was really, like I said, close with that particular young lady, but the Lord was leading me in that moment to, you know, just cut off all distractions and just keep going after him. Now that you got me, you need to be, you know, going after me even more. And so I remember a lot of uh, friendships and things dissolved during that time. Um, just over that course of that time, that weekend. But I know when that Tuesday came, I had it in my mind that I would never have another bad thought or a bad feeling. That I would never, I would never feel mad. I would never feel angry. I would never feel tempted. That's how I felt. I felt like when I received the Holy Ghost, I would never have a bad thought or nothing like that would come to my mind because they didn't teach us that those things would still be there after that. But you have to know how to, you know, live with mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost and operate in the Holy Ghost. So when that Tuesday came, I was like, wait a minute, why do I feel this way? Why do I feel like urges? Why do I feel like uh, thoughts coming to my mind? Why do I feel this? So I had thought I lost the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. I was like, whoa, what is going on? And then it didn't make it any better that uh, by that Tuesday, I didn't hear myself speaking tongues on Tuesday. So I'm like, okay, not realizing you're not going to speak in tongues every day or every second, you know. But um, I thank God that at that time, the little bit of knowledge that I did have, mm -hmm. I said to myself, I said, well, you know what? Um, I don't want to go to my pastor or my leader. I don't want to go to anyone and talk about this. I'm just going to go to God. So I got back on my knees and I prayed and I said, Lord, I said, I'm not sure what's going on. I thought that when I received the Holy Ghost that I would never have a bad thought come to my mind, never have a bad feeling, never have a bad urge or anything. I said, but Lord, I found myself still dealing with these things or still having some stuff. I said, so can you like show me what I need to do? And the Lord was just leading me just to keep praying. And so make it long story short, go on to about January 
going on to about February, I hadn't heard myself speak in tongues in, in a little while. And I was like, okay, something, something's not right. So I prayed one day and I said, Lord, I know you filled me on that Friday night. I know the joy I felt. I know the spirit moved upon me and I spoke in tongues, but I'm not sure why I don't speak in tongues like more. Like, why, why did it just happen that one time? Like, not knowing that, you know, the church didn't emphasize on that and teach it. So my prayer was, I said, Lord, if I really received the Holy Ghost that night and I'm not crazy, allow me to speak in tongues again like they did on the day of Pentecost. And brother, after I prayed that prayer, I hadn't stopped speaking since. Wow. And I thank God for that because, like I said, the churches, they emphasize, I mean, they emphasize it so much about you had to uh, speak for the Holy Ghost. You had to sanctify yourself. Uh, you had to stop doing everything that's not like God. You have to cry out and call on this name, turn down your plate. They emphasize on receiving the Holy Ghost and the importance of having it, but they never taught us how to keep it and how to live with it. And so that was something that's like I was fumbling through the dark, but I thank God that he you know, kept me afloat in the midst of all of that. Um, just going even further by having the Holy Ghost, uh, when the scripture talk about Holy Ghost leading you and guiding you into all truth. I thank God for that scripture because even as I was going forth, um, just in growing in the Lord, there were certain things that my spirit wasn't agreeing with that was going on in the church. Mm -hmm. And so at the time when those things would happen, it's always like I was the one that, that stood out because the church I was in, it was mainly older people. It really wasn't that many young people. So it was already like, okay, we're not trying to hear you. You're, you know, you're a youth, you're a kid. You don't have too much you can say. We've been in this thing a while. And that's kind of how they felt. They felt like, you know, we're seasoned in God. We know more than you. You know, there's nothing you can tell us that can help us. Um, and so I remember uh, there was one time I had mentioned uh, to the pastor at that time, because it was a woman preacher that we were under. Um, and I remember I mentioned to her one day when I was hearing about Acts 2.38, I said, um, mother, I said, um, can you explain, you know, Acts 2.38 to me? Um, I said, I hear people talk about um, Acts 2.38, that this is the right, I guess you would say baptism or whatnot, but can you explain it to me? So when I asked her that, um, her words was, brother, uh, she said, brother Dukes, this is what Peter said. Matthew 28 is what Jesus said. We're going to go with what Jesus said and not what Peter said. Okay. But in my ignorance, yeah, and because... Yeah. Because I was under her and, you know, didn't know no better. That's all we knew from the time I you know, was born. Uh, you know, I just felt like she, she just knew it all. So I said, um, okay, thank you, mother, for that information. I appreciate it. So I shook my head, you know, took what she said, and that was that. But I thank God for the Holy Ghost, brother, because I'm telling you, after that conversation, I hung up with her, got off the phone with her. I remember I was leaving work, and I was headed home. And when I got to the house, I heard the Holy Ghost say, one baptism. That's all I heard. And I remember the scripture, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. I heard it clear as day. I mean, literally like I'm talking to you. I heard it in my ear, one baptism. I was like, okay, no, I'm not going crazy. Nobody else is in the house but me. <laughs> What's going on? Like, I know the Holy Ghost is real, but this is, I know, I know my grandmother has told me, you know, God will deal with you and speak to you, but it's like, it's getting a little creepy. Like, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on? But I remember, I was like, where is that scripture at? Because I, I, this thing came to my mind. I know it was, you know, it's somewhere in the Word. So I went ahead and looked at it, and it was Ephesians, you know, 4 and 5, and I read over it, and I didn't pay it no mind. But then it kept coming back to me all that night, brother. And it's like my spirit was just unsettled with that. In the midst of that, I started reading the scriptures and just studying. And in the midst of reading and studying, uh, there was an apostolic pastor that actually wasn't too far from where our church was at at that time. And he started coming by, visiting us and, and fellowshipping with our family and stuff like that. And I will say the Lord used him one night to send me a list of scriptures and a text message because we didn't even know that Jesus Christ was God. They didn't teach that at the church. That so we you, they, you were like, you would say that you were a Trinitarian? A, a Trinitarian, Trinitarian, yeah, yeah. You might as well say that, yeah. Oh, so you were a full-blown Trinitarian. You didn't know Trinitarian. that Jesus Christ is God. You, you, didn't, you didn't know that. You didn't, we didn't know it. We didn't know it. I, it's so funny, just, just going back some years, I remember one time I was in middle school. Or I was getting on my knees to pray before I you know, went to bed at night. And I remember one night I got confused. I said, Father, Lord, God, Jesus. I was like, 
Wait, who do I who do I talk to? Brother, 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 you you, you need to say that again. <laughs> you, you, you need to say the confusion that you had again. Because brother, it seems like some people in... don't understand. Tell us again what happened. Here brother, you going on your knees. What happened, brother? What happened? Please tell us. Again. In middle school, it would have either been the seventh or the eighth grade. I always remember, like I said, when we pray, we would always say like Heavenly Father or Lord God, something like that along those lines. But I remember this particular night, I got down on my knees and I said, Father, Lord, God, Jesus. I was like, which one do I call on? And I was confused. I sat there for a second. I, I really sat there for a second. And I was like, well, they always tell us to call on Jesus when we're seeking for the Holy Ghost. So I'm going to just say Jesus. I didn't know. But I thank God for his mercy, man. I, I, <laughs> I say God for his mercy, because I know uh, I know there was one time I, I after the Lord, uh, as I get a little further into it, after the Lord opened my understanding about, you know, the Godhead and stuff like that, about Jesus Christ being God, I went back and mentioned it to, you know, one of my family members. I said, Jesus Christ is God. He was like, yeah, you, you, you can say that. No, hey, you, what you mean you can say it? No, <laughs> either he is or he isn't. But uh, they, they truly didn't, um, didn't have the understanding about Jesus Christ being God. But like I said, there was a apostolic pastor that wasn't too far in the area and um it was the thanksgiving i think of 2019 2018 2019 somewhere in that area um he sent me a list of scriptures uh one night and these lists of scriptures were all about the godhead and i didn't know it but he just sent me along all he said was um i think he said like greetings uh pray you and your family are doing well happy thanksgiving or something like that and he sent a long list of scriptures brother I left my family gathering at the time, went back home. And when I got home that night, I was like, let me look at, you know, those, that text message you sent me. And I opened the scriptures and I started reading them. When I got to the third verse he sent me, I said, Jesus Christ is God. Just like that, I said it. And it was, it was one particular scripture uh, that did it for me. And it was Isaiah 9 and 6. Because when I read that, I saw Father, Son, and Holy Ghost all in one verse. And I'm like, wow, all this time. That was there, and we didn't know that. So after I saw that, you know, I went back and I told my sister about it. And it was so funny how it was so foreign to our family that when I went back to my sister, I was like, hey, um, Jesus Christ is God. I said, look at the scriptures. She's like, no, Quiz, that, he's not God. It can't be. That's, that's not, it's not right. I said, listen, I, I know I can't explain it, but I'm telling you, he is. I, I don't know how to explain it, but he is. And so I remember after that, um, Realizing that there was a difference in the doctrine and my understanding coming open, I ended up leaving that church and I joined the apostolic church with that pastor that, you know, reached out. And I will say at that apostolic church, um, I was only there for about a year and maybe a year and a half. But um, in that year and a half, there was a lot of teaching um, of the faith that I did, that they did have. They still had women preachers and that was where there was error. But I will say that they did emphasize on not celebrating the holidays. So my understanding came open about that. And then when I came there, I got baptized. I got baptized there as well, too, according to Acts 2.38, um, that I thought. And so uh, while being there, they emphasized on, um, like I said, seeking for the Holy Ghost, they emphasized continuing of the Apostles' Doctrine. And, um, you know, me and a few of my um, friends from church and stuff came there and got baptized. And at this time, I was already listening to messages of apostle. And so I started listening to messages of apostle because a relative of mine, they would listen. And this particular relative, uh, they didn't believe in women preachers. And they knew that we did. And me and this particular relative were very close. I um, still are close to this day. And I remember one day they sent me um, an Instagram direct message and it was like some reels or like some YouTube links of Apostle Jennings preaching on women preachers. And so when it came to my phone, I was like, oh, I'm not trying to hear that. I know women can preach. I ain't. Yeah. Listen, I'm not, I'm oh, so you were, you were you were a full blown believer. I was rooted in. Yes, sir. You, 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 was, you, was, you was like this. You was going like this. To those I was like, preachers. go ahead, mother. Go ahead, mother. <laughs> Yeah, yes, I was. I was but to make it even to make it to make it even even bring it even closer to home with that. With me being a musician, I was playing the piano behind me. Wow. So yeah. when my and I had a I had an aunt that was and she still is, you know, a missionary or a woman preacher, whatever like that. So when she would have speaking engagements, I'd be right behind her playing the playing the piano behind her. Want to give a little soft music while they're talking and stuff like that. 
Yeah, so you 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 was you was in it like that. I, I was in it, man. I was deep in it. I yeah. was I was rooted in it, but I thank God that even in being rooted in it, it's that I thought as I would hear the scriptures about you know women preachers, and as I would like I said be introduced uh, to the videos of apostle preaching on it. I watched a couple of clips of Apostle preaching on it when my relative sent it to me, but I was like, yeah, you know, I agree with everything Pastor Jenner is saying, but that woman preacher thing is the one I can't agree with him on. I said, he's he's teaching everything right on everything else. I said, but I feel like the woman preacher topic, I don't think he's, I, I don't agree with that part. Uh -uh. I'm, I just, I'm not with that part, but I, I love listening to him, but that was the only thing I didn't want to, I didn't want to receive. But um, I will say, Shortly after that, uh, before, you, before you calling, continue, before you continue, what what made you so into the women preachers? Like what? And, and not, of course, what your state of mind is now, but during mm -hmm. that time, what is it as like a young man was really making you believe? Okay, no, women can preach. What was it? I, so I really believe what really made me think that was because at the time my youth leaders was my aunt and my uncle. And so both of them were ministers. So I will say that when you're raised around that, that closeness with your family, and then here it is, they're the ones that led you to, you know, the form of truth that you, you know, thought you had, you know, being around that, you're going to be naturally gravitating and pulling towards that, you know, because of that. So I had, like I said, cousins, aunts, and, and um, even my grandmother was never one preacher, but her sister's woman preachers as well too so just being around that and then also not only that just being just seeing how god moved through them because actually at the time i remember seeing spirits come out of people when they prayed for them not realizing or having the knowledge that you just got to have faith and believe me. and you know it, those things would still happen but i think because of me seeing the impact that they were making i felt like oh they're they're, they're not out of order because when a man does this and a woman does it, well, it's, it's still working out. So I think it's good. So that's how I looked at it, not realizing that, you know, God's church has an order and we have to go by that, mm -hmm. you know. But um, the church that we were in, the women outnumbered the men. <laughs> and it was like all the positions in the church were actually filled by women. Wow. The, bro the men were only brothers or deacons at, at that church. And that was something I never even noticed. I didn't even notice that until later on. I was looking at it like, man, why is it that the women... Only preach, but when it was time for baptism, the men were baptized. Well, what's up with that? But so, yeah. But I would definitely say I, I think the thing that made me gravitate to it is because how I saw God uh, in His out of His mercy, you know, still doing things for people. How people would come and they'd be sick and they'd pray for them and they'd be healed, not realizing that you know those things could still happen if there was faith. But even though in the midst of all of that, there was still error, but God had mercy on us, not knowing. So I think just being able to distinguish between the two and definitely now being in the truth, having a better understanding of how, you know, you can be a false prophet and it only takes you only takes one thing to make you a false prophet. Everything else may be true, but it could be one thing that you're teaching that's wrong and just seeing how we had all of that error, but there was still sincerity there and God moved out of mercy and sincerity. So that's what I would say on that. Okay. okay. And so now this relative, he sends you this clip and all that. You know, the woman preachers was mm -hmm. what you couldn't, you know, gravitate. So what happened from there? So after he sent me um that clip and I watched it, um, I, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to respond back to his messages anymore because he he started to send him a good bit. I was like, OK, you're about to choke me a little bit. <laughs> he was giving me a good bit, but I was like, OK, I, I know it's there. Um, and so I, I did. I really did listen to what Apostle was saying. I actually. Um, remember the scriptures. One of the scriptures was, um, I think it was, I suffer not a woman to teach or the use of authority over the man. That was one I heard him emphasize on a lot. And I remember um, it was one day that while I was fasting and I was praying and asking the Lord to uh, just help me to be more obedient to his will, just, just fasting, not necessarily on this, but just fasting. I was like, Lord, while I'm on my fast, I'm asking you uh, just to show me something. Mm -hmm. Just deal with me on my fast. Show me something just so I know that I'm just where I need to be at with you. I just want to know that. Brother, while I was on my fast, the Lord showed me that women wasn't called to preach. Oh. While I was on my fast, the Lord gave me two words while I was on my fast. Just like how I said I heard um, 
uh, him say about a one baptism. When I was in my room one day on my fast, I heard the spirit say she preached. And I was like, she preached. The spirit was like, she preached. So I was like, okay, let me go look in my Bible for those two words. She preached. Brother, I searched for about four hours. I searched all throughout my Bible. I could not find it. So I got on Google mm -hmm. and I said, let me get on Google and maybe if I can find some of these translation Bibles. I was like, if I can just find it in there, I'll be satisfied. Brother, I was hunting. It wasn't even in the translation Bible. It wasn't there. It just wasn't there. And I'm like, okay, I see she prayed, she prophesied, she testified, she expounded, but it don't say she preached. I was like, so I, are you, so you mean to tell me this is really real? I'm like, wow, okay, well, let me, let me just pray on it again. That's what I said. I felt like, let me just pray on it again. So, <laughs> so this is what I did. This is what I did. I, 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 remember, I never forget this. I closed my Bible. I put it on my nightstand. I went to bed. I woke back up the next morning, leaned over. <laughs> Kid, you don't lie. I opened my Bible. I said, it's still there. I said, it's still there. Okay. So I got to believe this. And from that day, God, I was a believer. And after that, I called that pastor that was at the Apostolic Church that mm -hmm. I was going to. And I said, Pastor, I said, can you explain to me um, why uh, we have women preachers in the church? And he, he gave me some, some information, but it wasn't, it wasn't scripture. And um, I said, well, Pastor, I think this is going to um, uh, not work out. He said, yeah, I think it's best that you find you um, an apostle's doctrine teaching church because we don't think you'd be able to be here any longer if you know having that kind of yeah. what? Yeah. Yes, and his his excuse was he said because I mean he gave me names he gave me uh, Deborah Priscilla but I had already been studying so every time mm -hmm. he gave me something I had something back for the answer yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I said yeah, well yeah. she did this or she did this um, and then I think what really did it for him he was like well you know Priscilla she she expounded I said Pastor I said no disrespect I said but when I read the scriptures. The only thing I see is that the aged women are mothers, the younger women are sisters. And if she got the gift of prophecy, she's a prophetess, but that ain't no preacher. I said, so can you give me something else? Because because uh, everything you give me, it ain't Bible. So can you give me something else? Uh, he said, I think it's, he said, you know, I think it's time, Brother Dix, that you find the, and because he already, I guess, was done explaining the best that he could. And I said, Pastor, uh, I think you're saying the right thing. I said, well, I'm going to get on it. And I already had my mind on where I was going. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, it's been first church. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, I, I definitely thank God because uh, right after that moment, I will also say that to my mom and to like my dad and to my my family, to them, it it seemed as if like, okay, Quez, are you, are you good? Because it seems like you're hopping churches. No, not hopping churches. I'm seeking for truth. And I thought I was coming out of the Trinitarian church coming here. I thought I was getting truth. And I did get a little bit of truth, but it was still so much more that needed to come into effect. And even to add to that about how I came into the truth, it wasn't just the woman preacher topic that did it for me, leaving that church and hearing apostle preach on that. But I also, while I was uh, in my house, went to YouTube one day Apostle popped up. I said, oh, this is Pastor Jenna, the same guy my relative sent me on TV. I said, let me put it on right quick and listen to him. I started listening. Brother, I was glued to the TV that day because it just randomly popped up. I wasn't, I didn't just type it in. It just randomly popped up. It was some two-hour message. I was like, well, let's just put it on. I'm in the kitchen doing some stuff. Came back out of the kitchen, sat down on the couch, listened to it, brother. When I tell you I was glued to the TV, I, and after I finished that uh, video, I literally said out of my mouth, I have learned more in these two hours than I ever learned in Sunday school. Oh. I ever learned in church. Hallelujah. 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 I've learned more sitting in front of a TV screen. And I and I like to, I like to watch documentaries. I like to watch all kinds of stuff. But even that, out of all of that, this was the most I've learned in two hours versus me in 20 some years of being in church. And I mean, even with my grandparents, my grandfather being a pastor, like I said, even my grandmother, they have been filled with the Holy Ghost for, I mean, over 40 some years, being in the little bit of faith that they, you know, thought they had, you know, just being being around all of this uh, spirituality, but not realizing that what we were getting, you know, it was good, but it wasn't good enough.
And so I, I definitely thank God for that moment because right after that, um, I had a hunger for the truth. It's like right after that, I want to put on the next video, then the next video, then the next video. And it's like I became an addict to the same it's like in the morning. I want to watch it. In the evening, I want to watch it. Um, and so it was funny because while I was in the middle of watching it, during that time period of uh, 2019 coming into 2020, um, I was still I was still going to the apostolic church. And so some of the teachings that apostle would teach, uh, I would compare it to what I was seeing in that apostolic church. So it wasn't just the woman preacher thing that did it. It was some stuff already building up with that. And then he said, you know what? I think it's about time you go and find another church. Because I also mentioned, I said, well, what about um, the jewelry? I said, we teach against jewelry. But they still wear wedding rings. I said, that's not that's not right. I said, and and I was already seeing that just from studying, you know, before I even heard Pastor say it. But then after I heard Pastor Genesis preach, I said, No, this is Bible. The uh, Pastor Genesis preaching it, you know, comparing it like that too. But uh even at that same time when we got baptized um, at that apostolic church, uh later on, I watched the baptism video of how they had baptized us. And I thank God that we did record it that day because if we never recorded it, I would have never known how it went because by the time I was under the water was when they were saying, you know, whatever they were saying. So I wouldn't have known what they said because I was already in the water. But I thank God that um, one of the members there recorded it on my phone. And so when the baptism service happened, because they didn't baptize, uh, like I guess you would say every Sunday, how we would do or every service. They baptize like certain times of the year because of the weather and things like that, which that's not a good reason to baptize all the time. But that was the, the way that they were doing it at this particular church. And I remember in the video, um, the bishop said, I now baptize you in the name, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He started getting excited. <laughs> and so, you know, I went in the water, came out the water, and I was you know, clapping my hands, thanking God for being baptized. We're in the car ride and we're on the way going home. And I'll look back at the video and I'm like, wait a minute. He got so excited. He didn't say Lord or Christ because I had been watching Pastor Jim. And so I knew you were supposed to say Christ or Lord and not just Jesus. And I was like, oh, no, I got to be baptized over again. No, this, this is not going to work. It's not going to cut it. And they had already packed up everything, already you know left everything. So I said, no, I'm calling the pastor when I get home telling him. No, why did y'all just say Jesus? You have to say Christ or Lord with it. Mm -hmm. So I remember calling him later on, talking about it to him. And um, he said, uh, uh, he said, yeah, he said he did get excited. He said, I noticed that because it wasn't him that did it. It was the bishop over us that did it at the time. So he said, what I'll do, Brother Dukes, he said, um, when we get back to church, you know, I'll just rebaptize you and, you know, some of your friends that you brought with you. And I said, okay, sounds good. Um, and before I got off the phone with him, the spirit was leading me to ask him, how was he baptized? Because it kind of came to my mind, well, if he was just baptized, just saying Jesus, then he can't baptize us. You know, mm -hmm. he was just baptized that way. So I asked him that. He said, well, Brother Dukes, I really don't remember if they said Lord or Christ or Jesus. I said, OK. So I'm sitting there thinking, like, maybe I can just let it go. Like, maybe, maybe I'm just going to choose to believe that he was baptized right way. So that's what I was giving up on. I said, OK, Pastor, all right. Then the spirit brought to my mind, uh -uh, asking who baptized him. I said, oh, Bishop, I said, before you got the phone, I said, you mind telling me um, who baptized you? And keep in mind, we've already been on the phone for a little minute, so mm -hmm. I'm not trying to keep him on too long, mm -hmm. but these things keep coming to me while we're talking. So I said, Bishop, um, do you mind telling me um, who baptized you? He said, oh, yeah. He said, my grandmother did it. I said, whoa. Lord so Jesus. After that, Yo. I said, uh, I said, uh, Bishop, we thank you. I said, all right, then. Got the phone with him. <laughs> <laughs> and so after that, you know, it was a little bit later on that, you know, we actually was fasting and praying or whatever like that. And the Lord showed me that women weren't, you know, called to preach at that time already. And so when I got with him, I said, yeah. And he's like, yeah, it's best that you know you find another church to go to. And after that, we packed up our stuff, got on the road. I think it was that Sunday morning we got on the road. It would have been 2021. Went to the Atlanta Temple and the Florence Temple and got baptized and been here ever since. Amen. Brother, we thank God. for. And the other individuals that got baptized with me, they're in Savannah as well, too. And they uh, with Savannah and Augusta Temple. So, man, we just thank God for just bringing us out of all of that. 
Of course, of course. Well, that's that's something, man. Like it, it, it's just so crazy to me. You know how when you really want to be right with God, yeah. no matter no matter what atmosphere you're in, no yeah. matter how lost you're in a forest, some way, somehow, Hallelujah. you're gonna find truth. So it's so crazy how you because you said you got baptized December fifteenth. Uh, um, you you got filled with the Holy Ghost December fifteenth. I got filled with the Holy Ghost December seventeenth, between twelve wow. and four a.m. So it's just it, it's crazy, but come on, it's hearing your testimony and looking back, man. I was just in 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 the forest. I was in the jungle, yeah. but because the Spirit within, it just Hallelujah. kept on seeking Thank and you, kept you, you just yeah. you're not satisfied. Even when I got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ months before, it's so crazy because as you stated as. You know, when you receive the Holy Ghost, y'all weren't taught how to live with it. I listen, I don't come from no Holy Ghost background, church, or wow. on the altar and tarry, none of that. So when I got baptized, and now it's like as I came to the knowledge of truth, I know what's God right, dealing right. with me. I just I said, God, I want everything from you. I started cutting everybody off. Like every yeah, event, yeah. I, I deleted my Facebook, deleted the Instagram. I was Snapchat famous at the time. I deleted it. And it wasn't like I was thinking about it. I just deleted it. And then as time is going on, slowly but surely, it was like, you, you have to continue properly in this way. You, you get yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you have to, con but it's just like, where, where is this coming from? So <laughs> like, what, like what, what, what's going, what is, how does this just cut off? And then, you know, because now that I'm, I'm baptized in the name of Jesus Christ correctly, and doing my because nobody was telling me, listen, man, you want to like kind of like set apart this. You you want to sing. I didn't know what sing. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know none of that. Man, and they I drilled us. They drilled us with that. They drilled us with you can't be going to the movies. You can't be out late. I mean, they had they, they were strict. But I will say they were very strict with us when it came to who we were around mm -hmm. and who we hang out around. And then all of that, they didn't even let us go to everyone's church. That's how serious it was. They didn't let us go to everybody's church because they were like, you need to. There was this saying, matter of fact, that the woman preacher that so-called founded that church, the saying that they always said was, stay in your teaching. Like that was that was their saying. They would say that in their testimonies. They would say, remember what I what our what Mother McGraw taught us, stay in your teaching. There's nothing else out here but your teaching. They used to always tell us that. Mm -hmm. Stay in your teaching. This is what's right. So I believed it. And even with that. They had it right with the um, divorce and remarriage. They taught against that. They had head coverings, dressed modest apparel. I mean, all of that stuff was the same. Mm -hmm. Women preachers and the baptism was the two things that hung them and the Godhead. Those are the things that hung them up. But when I say it was very sincere people, because brother, when I'm telling you, people were receiving the Holy Ghost there. Mm -hmm. They were really receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, but the people were just ignorant when it came to how to, or just unlearned, unskillful, and how to teach us how to live with it. So it, I really had to learn just pretty much on my own. Just through, I just kept, thank God I had a mindset of fasting and praying because that's really what kept me. That was one thing my uncle taught us. He did say, if you fast, you're last. And if you pray, you'll stay. So that was something he always told us. If I didn't know anything else, I knew if I fast and pray, I'll be able to, to make it. Mm -hmm. And so that was the only thing that kept me as he was like bringing me out of that darkness closer to the light. And yeah. like I said, some family members, they, they looked at it as if, oh, he's hopping churches. He's going here, going there. No, I'm looking for truth. You know, yeah. I'm trying to no, it's that get there. So that's what I was saying. It's that spirit inside. Yeah. It, it just, it's, 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 it's almost as if it's not even you, but it's just going for, for, I don't know. It's I'm like a magnet. It's like, it's yeah. like a magnet pulling you. It's just something <laughs> just to grab and you're going through the forest and nah, mm -mm, not here. Just, no, nah, not there, not there. And then, you know, he's just dealing with you and dealing with you. And then yeah. here it is. You come, you know, to the knowledge of truth. And it's it's honestly, the way I see it, especially within your experience that you had in falsehood, it goes to say what, you know, the apostle has said. You know, a false prophet, that's just a false prophet. Y'all, we're, we're going to know. Like, you know, T.D. Jakes, yeah. Joel Osteen, all these guys, uh, uh, Mike Todd, false. Oh, yeah. We're, we're going to know. But I remember when he taught that the false prophets y'all have to be we have to watch out for is the yeah. ones that have truth and lie. 
Yes, and when he when he said that, and you start to understand, because let's just say, for instance, what could have just been keeping you there was just that truth. But it's the fact mm -hmm. that that spirit within, no, no, this is a lie. You can't stay under mm -hmm. this. You can't stay. And I look at a lot of people in falsehood today. It's, you know, that ignorance or sometimes it's just that mm -hmm. they've known each other for so many years and, and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But when you have the Holy Ghost, when you are truly seeking God, you're not going to care mm -hmm. who you're leaving or who you're passing or or who you're who you're leaving, who, who's, mm -hmm. who's staying behind. You're, you're, That's so true. Rotating. That's why I and brother, I'll, I'll add to that. I'll add to that. I experienced that. I almost experienced, I guess you would say, like a sense of the devil was trying to bring like a sense of loneliness and depression upon mm. me during that time. Because with, with the transition and coming to the truth, it was like, OK, I don't know anyone. At the beginning. Uh, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was, it was kind of like, my God, I'm telling same you, brother, thing for me, like, brother. Same thing. Man, it, it was kind of like because, you know. When, when you, and you know you're close with your parents, you're yeah. close with your siblings and stuff. It's like when you hear them say, um, you've been in this church all this time and you mean to tell me you want to leave now? You don't think mother's teaching us right and all this? So when you're hearing all of this and you're constantly around a hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But there's something in you that's just, that's just keeping you. Like I kept remembering the scripture that talked about him being your comforter. And I kept thinking about when my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. I just kept remembering that. And I was just like, Lord, you got to help me. Like, Lord, I really want to serve you. But it's like, oh, I feel like I'm out here by myself, Lord. I said, I know that this is right. I remember I called. I remember calling uh, before I left the uh, the apostolic church when I was in the middle of leaving the Trinitarian church. I actually called that woman preacher. I called her because anytime I left the church, I always made sure I talked with the pastor first before I had left, just so they would know, you know, hey, I'm left and this is going on. So I remember when I called her, to let her know I was leaving to go to the Catholic Church. Oh, she she said, I don't know who you've got mixed up with. I don't know. She uh, allowed to get in. I mean, she told me all kinds of stuff, brother. And it, it really hurt me because I have known this lady, like I said, all my life, really what it was. And to this day, sadly, I have family members that still look up to her and worship her, seem like. But I thank God that in the midst of that, I, I didn't necessarily know where, where God was taking me or what he was doing. But I thank God that, like I said, he led me out of there to the apostolic church, from the apostolic church to the truth of God. And I thank God for that because, like I said, even in that transition, each faith, when it was from the Trinitarian church to the apostolic church, from the apostolic church, even to the truth of God, there was moments where I felt loneliness and depression. When I first came into truth of God, it was the enemy was bringing to my mind, like, okay, you're going to this church. You don't know nobody here. Uh, you know, you, how are you going to come here and want to serve? Because that was something I had in my mind. I was like, man, I don't want to just watch service on YouTube. I don't want to just watch on Zoom because I didn't have that information at the time. I was like, I want to be active in the church. I want to be able to serve. I was like, but how do I go about talking to somebody in the church? It just was all kind of stuff like that. It was making me very nervous. I remember my first time I went to a complication, didn't know nobody there. I was just sitting in the back and I was like, I'm really in the truth. Like I was just so excited just to be there and thanking God. Like, I'm so excited, but I don't even know who I can share this with. Like it was just, it was like I had it all to myself. But the joy of the Lord, when I say it was truly my strength in them seasons and in those moments. And I thank God that, like I said, in the midst of those low moments that I did feel in making the transition closer to the truth. It wasn't that, uh, I guess you would say that the devil had, I got the victory over me and he caused me just to be so locked down that I couldn't move. But it's like the Lord was baiting me to, to the truth. He was just leading me. Okay. You got this little bit here, then a little bit here. And so I, I just thank God, man. I thank God to, to, to say that I am out of it. To say that I, I still have a long way to go, but I thank God that I'm right where I need to be to get what I need in order to make sure that I'm ready to make the first resurrection. I, I just thank God for it, man. Moreover, oh, I that's do. wonderful. That's wonderful. But then, no, just it just myself when I just came in. As I said, I don't come from no fire shakanda, ya fire background. <laughs> you know, it's it's you know come from this false Haitian church I grew up right. in. And, 
this quiet Baptist church, and I didn't even know apparently Baptists were loud and stuff. I didn't know that, but oh wow, it's like I go to my first convocation in Philly, and I'm like, okay, maybe a part of the teaching is not saying hi to people. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm saying. I'm <laughs> I'm saying maybe it's a part of the teaching or something, you know, but let me just like I was just getting the cold shrugs, yes. mean mugs. Like, what yes. is this, an American thing? Like, this is something I did wrong. Do they know that I'm new here? Are they thinking I'm here to yeah. cause chaos or whatever? It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was such a lonely time, but mm. it taught me as as you know, I got more teaching, it taught me that the Holy Ghost is not just the evidence of speaking in tongue, but it's a comforter. Yes, and in is. the midst of yes. you going through that, it's tough if you try to go through that by yourself. But the comfort was, I'm here, I'm in the truth, and now Hallelujah. it's just time to serve him. I know why I'm here. You, you understand? Yeah. The people maybe mean, listen, even if it's today, people don't do it now. But even if it's mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. I'm walking and people want to mean mug and not say, I know why yeah. I'm here. I'm here for a reason. I'm here yeah. for a reason. <laughs> you want to mean mug me? Go ahead. Oh, Listen, I'll that's... pray for you. I come with a word. I got that, that, that's what it is now. That's what it is now. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, man, man, it's just, it's so, I'm just listening to your testimony. It's just making me reflect. Just making me reflect. And when I hear different, you know, small testimonies of people that I meet, it's when you want truth, man. Like when you really want to serve God. Like you're just, it's it, it just, I feel like it's impossible that you don't come into truth. And, yeah. and to even to even add to that, I cannot credit no one other than the Holy Ghost. Brother, when I'm telling you, if I did not have the Holy Ghost at the age of 16, I honestly don't know how I would have made it. Because even in the midst of that, having the Holy Ghost in high school, all the temptations and the pressures, all those things, college, all that stuff. If it was not, and then with all the transitioning, you know, with the churches yep, yep. and stuff like that, and the not, if it was not for the Holy Ghost, like steering me, like, okay, stuff is on this way, stuff is that way, but just stay right here. And it's like, I mean, when I say he really led me, like I, I experienced, when you talk about him being that comforter, I literally experienced that comfort. I experienced him leading me and guiding me into all, I experienced that thing, brother. And I'm telling you, I, I, I just thank God for it. So I, I all I can say is, the one thing that I did get out of falsehood was receiving the Holy Ghost there. And that happening is what changed my life for the good. I will say that. Wow. So I definitely thank God for that. I thank God that they emphasized the seek after it, tarry and wait. And I just, man, I just thank God for it. No, so it, it's honestly, it's a beautiful thing, brother. And it's just... And and I know some are watching and listening. Uh, I have no idea. You know, Holy Ghost stuff. Just what is what is he talking about? <laughs> search, search up, you know, Jennings uh, on the Holy yeah. Ghost. Yeah, I understand it. You know, because I do have uh, um, some people who are not even church people at all that listen yeah. and tune into this mm -hmm. stuff. And but you know, just to hear, you know, your testimony and to hear how the Holy Ghost is just—it's just man, like it's—it's it's just so amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to exp it's just you know because you feel like as if okay you're being guided because you kind of like the only one or this is because mm -hmm. these ones they're just they blessed they grew up in it but just to hear mm -hmm. no there's there, there was a famine out there there's so much more out there yeah in the forest so much more out there just Man. in the land searching and, and the wilderness in the wilderness <laughs> they're digging and they're climbing they just they, they can't see they're trying to sell and then some way, somehow, you just come into this way of holiness. You know, it's it's truly a blessing, brother. And we thank God that you've been delivered, you know, uh, from that. Because the, as you know, the Trinitarian and the woman preacher. And what's so crazy, it's even myself, the last thing I'm kind of coming out of under. I wasn't like so into it as you were, but it was woman preaching. It, 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 wow. it, it, just, just to give a take. It was just this like group thing. You know, we would meet up every other weekend. They would say it's not church, but yeah. Anyways, it was a lot of just mostly young, young ones. And I remember the the man the, that's there, he's like, oh, I see that you have a fire in you. I'm going to want you to preach the next time. I see that there's a fire. I want you to preach the next time. 
And then, so I'm kind of like, all right, I'm going to get this going and all this. I, I Don't worry, I didn't listen to no Gino Jennings yet and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't listen. And it's, you know, the Saturday to come. And he just said, oh, no, his wife is going to preach. Something just like, it, it it just hit me the wrong way. I don't know why. Like, I don't know why I didn't just say, oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. So, like, who oh, is wife? It's just... And now it's like, okay, what, what's really going on? And then whatever, you know, it just, it's happening, happening. But God knew I was in search for truth. And it's when I was mm -hmm. in my room, on my bed, all, and I was looking and looking, I find this, I just wasn't satisfied. There was just some, you know, it, it's like you have the match and you just, you keep trying yeah, to like yeah, light yeah. it. Every time I've come across left and right, it's just like, it's, it's nothing's happening. Yeah. And all I hear a voice say, search him up. L loud and clear as me and you are speaking right now. Wow. Search him up. The craziest thing is what came to memory was the bald headed light skinned preacher I seen back in middle school and high school. Wow. So I didn't even know Gino Jennings' name at the time. So what I do, I search on uh, YouTube, bald headed light skinned preacher slaps white Jesus because that's the video I saw. And the reason why I didn't at that time, I didn't really go more into it. It's because we knew growing up that Catholicism was some foolishness. I right. didn't realize the depths of what he was doing at the time. I was, you know, very young, maybe, you know, middle school, elementary, I don't remember. And as I, you know, and look, if y'all don't believe me, y'all could still go on YouTube till this day. Search it up. Yeah. Hard headed, light skinned mm -hmm. preacher slapped white. Jesus. <laughs> you know, I have to kind of apologize because when you come yeah. up close, you see PJ still got some stuff on. Yeah, I got a little bit of that. I got, got a little stuff. <laughs> you know, and so as it tunes in, the name still doesn't come up. It's like a, a number and the time and the, the, the episode and all that. So right, I click right, it. Right. And then finally, that's when I see Gino Jennings. And okay, I'm like, I'm here, but I'm listening to him. I'm seeing it. And then I see a video of Gino Jennings on women preachers. I said, my God, my... so direct. Because these wow. other ones I would hear, people would ask them. They would answer like politicians. Well, does the Bible say that women can't preach? When we go back into it, like I'm a... Yeah, they're beating around the bush. Yeah, around yeah. The bush. Uh -oh. But when I think it was Dan reading a letter, or no, no, it was um, or like yeah, Dan was reading a letter, and he's like, "Can a woman preach the Bible?" No, like what? what? Just like that, just like that. that, that that's it. What other is it? What did he just say? No, like I'm just just so direct, and explaining yeah, yeah. and explaining and explain. I'm like, my God, my, and then that's when. I just, okay, now, nah, and then, you know, when you listen to PJ and then you kind of go back to your falsehood stuff, you, you can't sit down the same no more. You just, you can't even, you can't even think straight no more. You can't even realize what's right. going. It just, you know, so that's why it's like, I just thank God, you know, for your yeah. testimony, brother, and, you know, how the Holy Ghost truly, it, 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 this proves and shows that the Holy Ghost is more than just speaking in tongues. Man, he's yes, a it comforter. Is. Yes. It's someone that it's some it's it's a spirit that will guide you and lead you to the right way. Yes, it will, brother. Make you make you realize and understand. Mm -hmm. No, this is contrary to what's inside of you now. You yeah. understand that the woman preachers is contrary yeah. to what's inside mm -hmm. of you. The, the the Trinity and it's just to see how you know you kept on seeking, you kept on it's almost as if that knocking, you have the Holy Ghost now. But you still kept knocking for truth, knocking, yeah. knocking, knocking. I need some more, Lord. You need some more, you know. So it's it's honestly a blessing to hear, brother, um, to see how God is just how He has guided those to His way, to truth, to knowledge, you know. And um, before we conclude, just when you look back and see, brother, what the Lord has done for you, how grateful are you to God? Are you to the Holy Ghost? For Apostle Gino Jennings. I thank God so much for our leader. Um, when I say there will be times that, whether it's at work or at school or just throughout the day, I'm putting on messages, just listening. Sometimes I don't even watch TV, just putting it on, just listening. <laughs> and, and I'll find myself uh, 
not just learning the things that's needed necessarily for church or just, you know, living in that particular sense, but just but life all in general. And that's something that I can truly say I haven't been getting at it in church just because, I mean, it, it goes beyond just teaching you how to live in church, but how to live, how to be a man, you know, what I'm saying? how to do all this stuff. And I can truly say that um, I'm so grateful for our apostle because he goes above and beyond. I feel like he goes above and beyond to make sure that the people have a clear understanding mm. to know, hey, there's no game. There's no gimmick. This is just it. Now it's up to you what you're going to do with it. Wow. And so I, it's just straight truth. And a lot of times, uh, you know, the truth can be hard and it can be tough, but it's for our good. So I, I, I truly thank God for him. I truly thank God for him. I think about him being that voice of one crying out. You know, I, I think about I think about when you talk about the vision about how everybody was just running. I said, Lord, I thank you that I was one of those ones in there. I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you need <laughs> Oh my! But I think I truly do thank God, and and, and I just to add to that too, when you said about thanking God for Apostle, one day I had thought about this. I was like, if I really have the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost can't fight Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. If, if what he's preaching is the word and is true, then my spirit got to bear witness with that. I, I, I got him. I got him. I can't fight that. So mm -hmm. it is what it is. I just yeah. got to suck it up and go with it. And I thank God that it wasn't just me saying suck it up, but it's like my my whole spirit just was, I mean, feeding off of it. It was just gravitating towards it. So I, I just truly thank God for the apostle because some of the things that I was already seeing and reading and learning when he came into my life through my relative and when he came into my life through that one day me getting on youtube and watching it it was like that just added fuel to the fire that was already there it's like all the the things that i was already telling them in church or some, some things i was already saying hey this is not right this is not right here it is now i have a, a man of god that's sent by god that's preaching these things and he got more knowledge on the things I was already, you know, wow. saying that were wrong or were not right over there. But I, I truly do thank God for him because my life has truly been changed because of the God that's in him, because of him being obedient mm -hmm. to the vision and the plan that God has given. But even with all of that, I still lead it back to the Holy Ghost and thank God for the Holy Ghost leading me and being in. Oh, wonderful. And as you said, you've learned more in two hours. I've heard that so many times. I I'm learned two more hours, in brother. two hours than twenty something years. That that is just that's impossible. That that that's just impossible to be done on the natural. Impossible. But to, brother, to, brother. oh my days, man! And I relate so much to that. I relate. So I was in much. Bible. You, you I was in two Bible hours? study group. Me, thirty minutes, man. Th just thirty minutes. Wow. Not even five, even. Five minutes of tuning into what this man was saying. I said I learned more. This, this, this is church right here. This, this is what is th this is it. This is who God said. Me, it took five minutes, five, ten minutes. I'm like, no, no, no. Uh-uh, uh, -uh, uh -uh. This, this, you, 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 you can't play around with this. Oh, that's here. funny. I mm -hmm. so for you two hours. Two hours, bro. I mean, all the Bible studies I was in, all the Sunday school, I mean vacation Bible school. Revivals. I told you we was in church about four or five times a week. Every service, Something. traveling all over the United States, brother. And <laughs> learn more in two hours. That's a more blessing. in two hours than I ever learned. That's a blessing. That's a blessing, my brother. Your, your testimony. You know, I I know it's gonna encourage many <clears throat> watching and listening, especially something you said so important. Uh, the Holy Ghost can't fight the Holy Ghost, and. Well, you know, I give God thanks um, that even till this day, <laughs> the Holy Ghost is not fighting. No Holy Ghost. I've never had a teaching. I can say this. Never mm. have I ever heard a teaching where I said, okay, now he's wrong now. Now, now we, okay, mm. now, now it's, it's something about submission. Something mm. about, I don't know, it's almost as if it's like butter. When I'm mm -hmm. hearing the teaching, so simple to get mm -hmm. and put on the bread and it just, it comes down and it just, mm -hmm. you know, I truly thank God for your testimony. Mm -hmm. And I truly, truly thank God for it. You know, it made me reflect a lot, a lot back, you know, uh, and Lord willing, brothers and sisters, soon time later on, you know, I'll get my testimony. 
<laughs> what will be later on, but it's truly a blessing to hear. The Holy Ghost, man. This this is a testimony. It's like, man, God really knows who are his. He 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 knows it. He yeah. doesn't yeah. think it. He's not a. He knows who. Yeah. You know. Then so I'm truly grateful and thankful for your brother for coming on, brothers and sisters. Thank you very much for tuning in, watching, and listening. Um, as always, you know, like, share, subscribe, all this wonderful stuff. And, you know, really, really keep in mind of these testimonies, brothers and sisters. As I say moreover, I don't do this for me. Um, I do this because I, I know it's really encouraging to those out there and it's glorifying God. Um, that's really just for people to see, uh, especially in the two things that you came out of, brother. It's what people are still hard on, the Trinity and and women preachers, yeah. you know, and so for God to be able to deliver you out of those two strong, like two of that together, Ooh. my God, it's oh, to deliver God. you out of that. Hallelujah! Thank God. Can't can't thank God enough. Thank you, Lord. Coming out of it, and just to to see more over. How Hallelujah. more more are coming in slowly and, mm -hmm. and slowly but surely. I'm telling mm -hmm. you, but uh, you, you, those of you watching and listening, but this, this is the real thing. This is the real deal. Yes, unscripted, unscripted, yes, organic, <laughs> organic, fresh off the press. <laughs> or get this is not scripted, nothing at all. These are real mm -hmm. people, real testimonies, real truth. I'm telling you, man, I, I, I gotta stop playing around, man. Stop playing mm -hmm. around. Jeez. Yes, Thank you very much, my brother, for coming on. Truly give God thanks for you. Let's not forget to keep our brother and his family in prayer. Uh, brothers and sisters, that our brother continues to strive and hold on to God's unchanging hand. Don't forget Amen. to keep me and my family in prayer as we continue to strive and hold on to God's unchanging hand. God knows I, I, I never want to let go. I may be weak sometimes. I, I, you, you, you just may be down, but just he don't want to let go. Oh, <laughs> he don't want to let go. You know, so thank you very much for coming, brother. Thank you for listening, brothers and sisters. It's your brother, son, in Esperos, where brother Zyquez Dukes, as some of you may know me as a podcast man. That's all. Uh, we're getting out of here. Thank you for listening. God bless and peace be unto you.